Every major API has rate limits. Make too many requests to GitHub, Stripe, or AWS, and your requests get rejected. How do these systems work? Rate limiters control how many requests a client can make to an API in a given time window. They protect systems from overload while maintaining fair access for legitimate users. Let's tackle the core design challenges. Let's go over the requirements first. The system should limit incoming requests based on configurable rules, like 100 API requests per minute per user. When limits are exceeded, the system should reject requests with HTTP 429 and include helpful headers showing rate limit remaining and reset time. The system should introduce minimal latency overhead, say under 3 millisecond P95 per check. The system should be highly available and accessible by multiple servers. Now that we understand what we need to build, let's start with the simplest approach, fixed window counting. We divide time into fixed windows, like one minute intervals. Each user gets a counter that resets at the start of each window. Here's how it works. A user is allowed 100 requests per minute. At the start of each minute, their counter resets to zero. Each request increments the counter. When they hit 100 requests, we reject additional requests until the next minute begins. We need to store these counters somewhere fast. The database is too slow for this. Today's video is sponsored by Warp, the best way to code with AI agents. Too often, agents write code that's almost right, leaving developers stuck debugging instead of shipping. Warp is different. Rank top of Terminal Bench and Sweet Bench Verified. Warp's agent understands your context and writes production ready code out of the box. Prompt, review, and refine all in one interface. No context switching, no wasted time. You stay in control. And it pays off. On average, users are saving over an hour a day with Warp. Download Warp by clicking the link in the description. We're adding a database query to every request, which could overload the very system we're trying to protect. What about in-memory storage and its server? This would be very fast, but it only works for a single server. When we scale to multiple servers, each server would have its own separate counters. A user could make 100 requests to server A and 100 requests to server B, effectively getting 200 requests per minute instead of 100. Redis solves both problems. It's an in-memory data store that's shared across all our servers. Redis provides primitives to increment counters and reset them automatically. But fixed windows have a critical flaw. Consider this scenario. A user makes 100 requests in the last 10 seconds of a minute then 100 more requests in the first 10 seconds of the next minute. Both bursts are within their 100 requests per minute limit individually, but they've made 200 requests in just 20 seconds, which clearly violates the intended rate limit. This edge case happens at every window boundary. We could use a better algorithm. The token bucket algorithm solves the fixed window problem. It's the industry standard used by companies like AWS and Stripe. Think of it like this. Imagine a bucket that holds tokens. New tokens are added at a steady rate. Each request consumes one token. When there are no tokens left, we reject the request. Let's see how this fixes our window boundary problem. We set a bucket capacity of 100 tokens that refills at 100 tokens per minute. During quiet periods, tokens accumulate. When you use some mixed burst requests across window boundaries, they consume accumulated tokens but can't exceed the refill rate over time. The key insight is that tokens accumulate during quiet period. This allows legitimate traffic bursts while maintaining the overall rate limit. A user can game the system by timing their request to window boundaries. The algorithm uses two parameters. Bucket capacity determines burst size and refill rate determines sustained throughput. A capacity of 100 with a refill rate of 100 per minute allows up to 100 requests instantly, then maintains exactly 100 requests per minute long term. There are other algorithms like sliding window logs, sliding window counters, and leaking buckets that solve the fixed window problem differently. But token buckets strike the best balance between simplicity and effectiveness for most use cases. Now that we have our algorithm, we need to decide where to implement it in our system architecture. We have three options for where to place our rate limiter. Client-side rate limiting puts the logic in client applications, but we can't trust clients to enforce their own limits. Malicious users can modify the code or bypass restrictions entirely. Server-side rate limiting embeds the logic in our application code. This gives us complete control over the algorithm 
and keeps everything in one place. The downside is that rate limiting gets mixed with business logic, and each service needs its own implementation. Middleware rate limiting uses a dedicated service between clients and the APIs. This could be an API gateway, a reverse proxy, or a custom service. This keeps rate limiting separate from business logic and provides a single place to manage policies. The trade off is an increase in system complexity. What should we choose? It depends on our situation. If we already have an API gateway handling authentication, adding rate limiting there makes sense. If we need a custom algorithm, server side gives us flexibility. For most systems, middleware offers the best balance of control and operational simplicity. Our system architecture looks like this. We store rate limiting rules in the configuration service. These rules define limits like premium users get 1,000 requests per hour or free users get 100 requests per hour. The middleware fetches these rules and stores token bucket state in Redis. When a request arrives, the middleware identifies the user, fetches their token bucket from Redis, and checks if tokens are available. If yes, it decrements the token count and forwards the request to our API servers. If no token remains, it returns HTTP 429 with headers showing when the user can retry. This works great for a single relimiter server, but what happens when we need to scale to multiple servers? We run into race conditions. Here's what happens. Server A reads a counter value of 3 from Redis. At the same time, server B also reads 3. Both servers check their limits, decide the request is OK, increment the value to 4, and write it back to Redis. The counter now shows 4 instead of the correct value of 5. We've lost a count. We can solve this with atomic operations. Redis supports these two Lua scripts that bundle the read, check, and increment into a single indivisible unit. This prevents race condition entirely. We've covered the essential building blocks for rate limiters in this video. There are other interesting topics we didn't cover. How do we handle geographic latency with multi-region deployment? How do we handle hot keys when a few users generate most traffic? How do we upload rate limiting rules without restarting servers? Should the system fail open or fail closed when key components go down? These are all interesting topics worth exploring. Ready to ace your next technical interview? Join our community where we offer comprehensive courses on system design, coding, behavioral questions, machine learning, and object-oriented design. Learn more at bytebyco.com.